So, hi, I'm Derek Harris talking with famous people, and I'm talking with fellow old, well, he's not old, he's not nearly as old as me, I don't think, he's probably, looks like he's about 30, but um, older than uh, other ENTPs that I've met on the internet, and interacted with directly anyway, Taylor, and I was telling him about my existential terror, that is to say, when I reflect upon the passage of time, my parents getting old, uh, Delilah being a and a young adult now, you know, she's almost 18, uh, all that kind of shit, it makes me gasp in terror at the potentialities already lost and the nature of reality is potentiality consuming ways. Taylor, if you have lo been misplaced again, then I'm here. Oh, you are. I was, I was, just, Go ahead. I was just waiting for something after your statement. What comes after my statement is your your considered response. Okay. Um, I kind of just try to avoid that thought altogether because it's a sinkhole of what the fuck are you going to do about it? Right. So nothing, nothing to do about it is true. There, there, there's no resolution, so I just avoid that one. Thanks, though. It's nice being back. <laughs> what? <laughs> I like that, but I'm not quite sure. That, that's that's uh, it's good thing a sentence to interject randomly in in conversations. I think. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. I said that's a good sentence to inject randomly into conversations in oh. general. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a lot of those sentences. A lot of injecting going on. Right. So, are, do you, are you somebody who makes a lot of jokes in general in conversations? Um, I do for my own amusement. Most of the time I don't expect people to catch them. Do a lot of them get no response? You just, and you don't, you don't pause at, our, at all to... To find out, you just sort of roll, and then then like the response trail behind you or whatever, like like. Uh, I, yeah, I like normally that. just keep moving and pretend that it's not there, and and I'll stop then if if there's like there's sometimes there's that one person and they who caught it, but they're not sure if they caught it, but they <laughs> caught it, and yeah. they're wondering if you're really fucked up enough to say that. You know what's gratifying if you make a lot of videos, Lorenz Walker, who's in the room here, he shared with me in a comment catching a joke that I did that to. I did what you described there. I just said the joke and I just rolled I totally straight face and just rolled along as though it weren't a joke. And nobody laughed. And then Lorenz Walker said he rewatched it later and he got the joke that time and he thought it was funny. So that's gratifying, right? I mean, that's kind of nice that if you if you record mm -hmm. these things, then there's a record of your of your cleverness, which is astounding. But it's still gratifying, even if people don't notice it, because you notice it. You but you hope that there is that one other person in the room. Now that's a kind of a cool bonding moment, right? That one other person is normally an introverted sensor, I think. Really, not an introverted intuitor. They're probably not paying enough attention. No, because intuitives are kind of thinking ahead. Hey. Right. That's a good point. Yeah. So, based on all the facts that you know right now and nothing else, I'm going to ask you to make one of your magical ENTP predictions for the future. I'm going to ask you, ask you to assess a current trend to tell me if it's going to be the next big thing. And the current trend... It's just starting, barely, barely starting to trend. So little so that you probably wouldn't yet say it's trending at all. The thing I'm talking about is, of course, quadrabbling. Will it be the next big thing? Explain what that is. Quadrabble is when you get together with a group of four, a total of four people. One, for us, it would be one ENTP, one INTP, one ISFJ, and one ESFJ. Now, if you have all four of those, you've got the quadrant together with nobody else in the room. You are, have achieved a quadrabble. When you have a quadrabble of those four and exactly those four types together, those individual people are said by very reputable sources to experience 
elation. I think it's okay. Well, it's not going to be a fad. That's for damn sure. But it it sounds enticing. I'd like to try it. Well, you know what? Before you dismiss the can the possibility of being a fad, I think you better check out the important information at quadrabble dot com. So you know, you know what's a fad is Pokemon Go. That there are not enough people with enough mental capacity that this is going to become a fad. Okay, but listen, here's the thing, though. But dazzling on Adderall might become a fad. Pokemon Go, though, that's not. I'm not impressed by your ability to to project out that Pokemon Go will be a fad because it's already a fad. No, I'm using it as an example. It is a fad. Now, look at the people who make fads, and then how many of them are interested in anything? Stemming out of anything with an ology on the end. Well, they're inter interested in fadology, the ology of fads, obviously. Whether they call it that or not, whether they use the term, whether they use the official term fadology or not, they're obviously deeply engaged in the fadology of fads. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, what do you think? So give, I don't give, think it will be a magical I think prediction. Most people are just too stupid. Give me a prediction right now. Stupid. Give me a prediction right now that two years from now you're going to be able to watch this video and see, see, I told you. And people would right now say, I don't think so. Um, black lines and blue lines is going to escalate until NATO has to intervene. Until Oops. what? Who has to intervene? NATO. You're going to predict that's going to happen in how long? Two years? Uh, quicker than that. We might get... <laughs> You, you are making the prediction that Black Lives Matter and police, so, police, yeah, are um, are going to escalate until NATO intervenes. <laughs> that way, like France is going to send troops over to help us. Um, kind of joking, but kind of not. <laughs> I, I don't think. I, I'm pretty sure. I mean, there's joke. a lot of fault. I want an actual mm -hmm. prediction. I want you to make an actual prediction that you think is true, but not commonly believed to be the case. As of what's going to happen within, let's say, four years. I'll try to make one too. I'll start to think of one. Hmm. Okay, here's a prediction. Your your Google your Google Plus account will become your your driver's license. I like your that. whole identity is going to funnel into Google. It should. Google's the most. They, Google's proved themselves most effective at de dealing with that shit. You got to have one central thing. I agree with you. I like that idea a lot. That's a good one. Here's my prediction. In in all urban areas that are in the outer twenty percent closest to the coast, right? So in all the parts of the United States that are twenty percent of this way on the, along the edges okay all of those places housing prices will exceed their peak at the bubble within four years okay agree or disagree mm. disagree Okay, what? There are too many macro factors that go into the, the real estate market. Chinese immigration, though. And, yep. Huh? But Chinese immigration, though. Immigration? But immigration is, is taxpayer-funded to a good... From China. They come and buy a lot of real estate. I know. I've been to where you live, essentially, and it's very, very Asian. Right. Um... So how many of them are buying buying up big swaths of real estate? Lots of them. No, it's already been picked over. Well, that's the thing. That's why I'm saying within four years, going to spread out to the the twenty percent in from the coast. That all that land will become will be seen in the same way that land around California, where they think currently it's worth buying, they're going to see that as anything within twenty percent of the coast in either direction. I think the I think the the population trend is accurate. I think that uh, your your result depends a lot on the stability of the dollar, um, just basically global market stability. If the world currency is in any trouble, then that whole thing goes to shit. 
Now, there's still the man. There's still the people coming over at one land. But but I guess maybe it's the way you phrased the, the conclusion. Well, I wanted to make sure that it was a conclusion that was bold, which is... We know what the housing, the average house price in that area was. I don't know exactly what it was, but we could look it up, you know, uh, at the peak of the bubble when supposedly prices and houses were ho totally inflated. My point is they weren't really that inflated. In fact, the problem wasn't the housing prices. It was the behavior of those uh, who were, were giving credit to people who wanted to buy houses. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I would agree that there, there's a, what, a ton of people getting credit who shouldn't have had credit. Right, and then there, there were there were loan lending tools that shouldn't have been used at all. Right, uh, zero zero percent principal reductions based on the assumption that your home is going to continue to appreciate value indefinitely. Yeah, ridiculous. I agree with you. And in fact, my friend Corey is an INFJ. Predicted that about two years before it happened was like, oh my god, this housing bubble is going to burst. It's, you know, and and he was completely right. The other thing he predicted successfully, I mean, I we sort of both predicted this concurrently. I don't know who we should get credit for, but um, we predicted. Probably goes the NTP. We yeah, I I agree, I agree with you. Uh, <laughs> we, predicted, we predicted gold was going to go up by at least four times as high as it was when it was low. This was uh, right near the beginning of the uh, Iraq War, I think, and it did. But of course, even making those predictions, it would be it would have been great if I had actually bought some gold, right? Instead of just telling my parents, like, "Listen, guys, you should really listen to me. You should buy some gold. I don't have a lot of money or anything. I don't have any money to invest. You guys do. You should fucking buy gold right now." They didn't listen to me. Nobody listens to Eric. Do you experience that as well? Does nobody listen to Taylor? Um, people, <laughs> people have started recognizing that maybe when Taylor when Taylor projects shit, it's not just an off the cuff sort of thing. Uh, those of people have been around me a while. Yeah, I do get a lot of the skeptical looks. And then I like to go back and remind people that Taylor's always right. <sighs> it's important. It helps them in the future. Which is, <laughs> which is actually a saying in my life. Taylor's always right. But if, if, you're, if you're not right, then you stop being that so that it returns the, state, right. the rule to be in a state of correctness. You know, Taylor is always right until proven otherwise, and I'm waiting. <laughs> Hey, don't hold your breath, Taylor. It's a long wait. Uh -huh. It's a long, long wait. You might you might as well just go ahead and, and call it a day on waiting and just go home and, and watch TV because I don't think anybody's going to show up. I've sent out invitations and nobody shows up. <laughs> that's, so, that's why we get default uh, winner of ties. <laughs> that, that's a good reason. I like that warrant. I'll remember that. Uh, that should be an official rule around talking to those people. I just have a lot of rules that um, contradict each other and that require you to to either follow or not follow other rules. I just have rules that are just about which other rules you should have to follow and which other rules you don't have to follow. <laughs> rule number six. You should, you should definitely follow rule number three, but only follow rule number four if you agree with rule number seven. Like that. <laughs> Make it like the federal tax code, you know. <laughs> I just, I, oh, she's massive, massive internet form to to be able to register to participate in talking with famous people. <laughs> but you don't actually. I do have my to own do taxes, it. by the way. You do your own taxes on time. Yeah, this will probably be the last year. No, uh, that's for people in not my income bracket. For your quarterly. No. Oh, okay. Anyway. Yeah, but I get you. I get you. Uh, uh, the thing is, I'm not up there, but I, I am, unfortunately, I had, didn't do my taxes, like, at the regular way this year because I need to go talk to a corporate tax lawyer, which is annoying. Or, or, or do it myself. I could figure it out myself, but it's so boring. That's the problem. I'm not motivated to, to figure it I out. I got committed this year. Yeah, I got committed. I mean, I was time committed. By the time I realized that I was a bit in over my head and they were going to be late, I already committed enough of my time that they're going to be fucking late. Well, I just wish there was some way we could submit our taxes that that forced them to 
be uncomfortable. Like you, you know, they they refuse to let you send like, <laughs> nothing but nothing but pennies, right? Tea party. I, I I want I want to send them dollar bills. Fine, okay, I'll, I'll give you cash somehow, but I want to I want to write angry words on each bill so that that and make you. And I'm going to crumple them all up into little balls. <laughs> you know, like, like Rub that. them in baking right? soda. What's that? Rub them in baking soda. What would that do? I don't know. What would that do if you rub them in baking soda? Well, I mean, look like cocaine. Oh, yeah. give, them, give them all sorts. That's a great idea. Give them all sorts of, of hints without actually trying to deceive, without actually saying anything false or anything, right? All sorts of hints that their protocols ought to indicate that they take, they shut down the building. You know. <laughs> Look, we're going to pay you people anyway, so we'd rather pay you to sit home than to continue paying you to hurt, hurt people all the time for no reason. So, since that's your hey, job... Yeah, open an internet business or something. Yeah, since that's your job right now is um, unjustified violence against people, can you just go home and we'll, we'll just, if we have to pay you, fine, we'll pay you, but just... Stay home. Stop doing so much damage, for Christ's sake. <laughs> I'll pay you more. The fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> These fucking people. Anyway, I'm sure you don't like the the IRS either, but I haven't actually had any run-ins with them yet. I'm anticipating having some at some point because... I like anticipate the, having some after this video. <laughs> Do you think they... they yeah, yeah I, I'm pretty sure the IRS isn't watching these videos. If they are... Listen, guys, you need to do a better job of sharing them on Facebook. Okay, IRS employees? I want every IRS employee out there watching this, NSA, you guys too. Get your butts on Facebook and start sharing this shit. Okay, it's important. Could you imagine how dull their Facebook would be? <laughs> I mean, it's all like, here's another confirmation of what we all agree about. <laughs> Feel good story about a puppy. Right. It turns out we're okay, and things that are different are not. That's the end, everybody. Nothing else to see here. Everyone, stop looking into anything. Just that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking. Why well, you should forget about Lois Lerner? Who's Lois Lerner? See what I mean? No. You got me. <laughs> the uh. Just can you just Google it? Los Learner. The, 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 the woman who revealed that there was political par uh, targeting in the IRS. Oh, okay. Let me see. I, I, I'm not very informed about such things. I try not to, to look up libertarian stuff at all because it makes me too mad for no good reason. I, I don't mind ranting about it because I'm just doing the headlines. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. You get pretty much get everything you need to know from a, a vague gist of something. That's all you need to know. If you get the if you get the general idea of how they're arguing it, that's all you need to know. You don't need to know anything yeah. about, the, about And like then if you know someone's stance, you can backfill in their bullshit from there. Right. You can. You can you can reverse Oh, Lois Lerner. What did I say? I thought you said Los Lerner. Like, uh, like oh. Los Lerners. We're, we're Los Lerners. <laughs> we're a, a mariachi band. Um, yeah. Okay, I'll read about that later. I get the gist of it. She's a whistleblower and probably... They, I'm sure what they did was they said, oh my gosh, thank you so much, Lois, for pointing out these problems we're having internally here at the IRS. We are devoted to excellent public service. Is that what they said? Something like that, yeah. Hmm, that's what I would expect from our, our beloved government. Okay, so I want to know what... So you've, you've, you've attained a certain level of security that you need to make sure you can play a certain amount. And that you make sure that your kid's taken care of and stuff. We got to do that first and foremost. You've done that. So where is your... Talk to me about, like, not necessarily spirituality, because people hate that word, but um, <laughs> about your metaphysics. Talk to me about your metaphysics. Do you have... Are you concerned with such matters at all? Or is it just a matter of, like, well, 
I'm going to continue to uh, do intriguing man matters of play sufficiently as to distract myself from from thinking about uh, enigmatic things like that. Now, are you talking about just uh, just how religiously confined is, is that question? Oh, it, it's not. I mean, metaphysics simply means do you have an understanding of how a non-physical world operates that's distinct from the rules of the physical world? Some people yes. like to try to collapse them and say, no, it's all deterministic. Um, I'm, I'm very, very contently agnostic on everything metaphysical and recognize that I don't know what I don't know. And I can't possibly speculate accurately about what I don't know, um, and I'm I'm content enough in that agnosticism to kind of persuade myself not to dabble more than will be useful, which if I, is if I were to essentially ask you this question, if I were to say this to you, would you agree or disagree with it? Taylor holds strong beliefs. Agree. Taylor is attached to his beliefs. I uh, disagree. Can you explain the difference between what? Can you explain why you answered them differently? Yeah, my beliefs are based on uh, my beliefs are more are more concrete, more uh, sensing, I suppose, based off experience, interpersonal interactions, um, you know, just the do's and don'ts that I've determined to be important what do you and they are changing what do you think about this this answer to that question that the question mistakes the nature of belief it's not something you have and possess or at least not something I have and possess but rather it's reflective of behaviors predicated on assuming things not in evidence so faith you're asking more about faith I, I'm, I'm, and then I would say that, I, and I'm not talking about religious faith, just faith, the belief in something without, no, without evidence. No, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm saying to believe in something is to behave as though it were true, despite not having it tangibly true right in front of you. So anytime I drive to some place, like I drive to Santa Barbara, I have believing that Santa Barbara is going to be there when I arrive. But to say that I have a belief, to say that I believe that Santa Barbara exists is a mistaking understanding of the word belief, because I don't possess that belief. I behave as though it were true, maybe. To, you're, it's a failure to distinguish between a position statement or an advocacy statement or something like that and, um, and a time object called that position that you cling to inside your brain as, this is mine, right? I. That's why right. I, I I think that. It's so really I don't useful. know that I have. I would say I have strong beliefs then, uh, in in that context. Probably not. Nothing right. sacred. Right. I think the think the definition of a strong belief is the extent to which so a belief is going to persist in the absence of evidence either way. Okay. So like, if if I as, until I given that I don't hear anything that says like Santa Barbara's suddenly dis disappeared. My belief will persist that it's going to continue, but if if I have a strong belief, that means it will persist even when there's evidence to the contrary. So I read an article that says Santa Barbara no longer exists. It's disappeared. It's just empty space there now. And I say, no, that's not true. And I refuse to believe it. That's not true. That's not true. Santa Barbara has not disappeared. Then I have a strong belief that Santa Barbara's there, right? Whereas if I go, oh, I guess Santa Barbara's not there anymore, then I had a weak belief that Santa Barbara was there. Or I had a, a, I, I, had, a I had a detached belief. I had a non-attached belief, I guess is a better way to say it. So I, I can only think of a couple of attached beliefs. Most of mine then would be non-attached. I'm not very attached to them. They're constantly changing. Once something gets attached, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's dead potential. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Once something's really locked down, then it limits the the opportunity to to make the right decisions on the fly. 
it almost has no purpose anymore. It, it just dies as, as a potential. Taylor, its purpose is to bore you. Fuck. There's enough of that. Yeah. So, do you like your work that you do? I don't. I don't want to pry into your personal life or anything, or ask you too many questions about what you do or anything. But do you enjoy it? I do, and then I'm going to probably kind of leave it alone there. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I'm guessing you very much enjoy being a parent, and I wonder if you could tell me what it's done to you metaphysically the difference between you before kid and after kid i'm a shitload nicer yeah that, that's the answer that's the answer that really is that's the only that's the best possible fucking answer is exactly what my answer would have been if i had been concise right well it made me a lot nicer that's that's it in a nutshell yeah i could try to boil out little parts but it's not gonna matter ultimately i'm just nicer yeah. Do you do you read to her? Not as much as I should. Yeah. I, I you know I didn't read a lot to Delilah. I told her stories. I just told her stories. We uh we sometimes uh I guess let our N E float around. Yeah, I bet. I bet. <laughs> That's the thing you can play with them. Like, I, I have a lot of cool recordings of Delilah when she's little, uh, making little songs to me and stuff, and her, her freestyling shit, and there's this one video, mm -hmm. I, it's not a video, it's an audio, I titled it Father of the Year, and then the audio is the audio of Delilah getting this lighter that I had, that at the time that you open it, and it said, fuck you, it was like a joke lighter I got at the NSS <laughs> store, right? And so she's, she's uh. playing with it, and then she says... Why does it say this? And then the, it goes from there to her walking through asking me if she can say the, that word out loud. And then I go, sure, of course, you have to do what you want. And then she says, like, she's worried that God will be offended because her mother was religious, you know. And, uh, uh, no, that's and I said, God doesn't care about that. And then after a little pause, she goes, fuck you. And then, and then, <laughs> and then she proceeds. I got to put that up. I got to fucking, you know what, when I'm done with this afternoon, I'm going to fucking make a little. A little, just a black black screen video, and I'll put that up today. That's a funny thing. I have the idea. Can we, can we just take a take a soft post parental ENTP moment and acknowledge how fucking cute it is the first time they cuss in context? Yes. <laughs> right. And it, you know what's adorable? She asks about context in the in the audio. She says, um, "So, but she tries to clarify her position because she's like little, little, like four years old or something." She's Basically saying, I, but I don't understand why the lighter is saying fuck you because it doesn't seem contextually appropriate. And, and then I say, well, it's just a joke, sweetie. It's because, but, you know, well, why is it in a, in a, a man's voice even though it's the, the, the lighter is shaped like a lady? And it's, well, it's a joke. It's made in China. They don't, they don't understand why they're, <laughs> it, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, it's just an absurd thing I picked up. And then she says, so it, would it be contextually appropriate after she finally says the words, she then asks me, so would it make sense if I said, get off the fucking computer and let's go, <laughs> I'm like, yes. That makes sense. <laughs> uh. yeah, I'm going to put that shit up. Um, so, okay, cool. Yeah, post, post parenthood is, is a different life. And uh, although I will tell you, the, the intensity uh, wanes as they get a little older. It's, it's not quite as as heart consuming as it is when they're little. So that's the other thing is, do you have moments where you allow yourself for just a minute to imagine awful shit happening? And then you just like collapse in terror? Yeah. No. No? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yes, I do, but I uh, don't ever collapse in terror. Well, you probably suppress it quickly, I would guess. I'm sure you don't indulge in it. It's much. a pretty quick, oh yeah. I don't even know what's happened normally. Right. Fucking stomp that fire out. Right. Well, when I used to do it, I go, fucking, you better not think about that shit, Eric. Don't do it. <laughs> There's no reason to think about that. Because you know what it is? It's like some sort of weird uh, emotional masturbation. Like awful, weird emotional masturbation where you think about something that has, that's just unthinkably awful and experience this huge, yeah, of emotions. 
And I think it's because that that, that yeah, of emotions isn't something that really happens much, ever. In your world, it shouldn't. I mean, it, it shouldn't should happen, but it does happen if you let. That's that's why you can't think about that kind of shit, right? That's why I refuse right. to think about any sort of like sad story about somebody who's homeless or anything. I don't want to know about that shit. You know? Exactly. There are those, those fucking commercials that want you to donate money to dogs. Fuck and some eyeballs and stuff. You know, how, how could it possibly be okay for them to put those commercials on TV? But it's not okay for them to show titties. How could that possibly be, be the case? <laughs> exactly. Those commercials make me feel awful emotions, and titties make me feel good emotions. If we replace all those with titties... Let's make a law. Think how much happier the world would be. Ma let's make a mandate, federal mandate. Taxes waived if you show more titties. <laughs> I gotta work on that one. That one needs to be refined. Dude, hey, listen. Government rebates for... for for promotion of nudity in general, I think are a good way to undermine the government just because we, we, <laughs> you can make ridiculous arguments. You can make all the fucking ridiculous utilitarian arguments the statists make about it. Like, in the status quo, clothing and apparel companies are exploiting American workers and blah, 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 blah. And, and then, you know, make all these sort of progressive arguments as to why we need to give tax refunds to anybody who promotes nudity in, in the abstract. We got to be careful with that. It could be weird. That needs some refinement too. Okay, that could get weird. I, I, won't, I won't. I won't toss it out there in the in the uh, in the actual phase in the actual execution. I'm gonna have to that. chew on that. I'm gonna have to chew on that thought for a while. Oh, don't worry. I'll See, hold, I'll hold that's back. That's a much better thought than all the, the metaphysical musing about how time is passing and people are dying. I would much rather think about how to use titties to simulate the economy and undermine the authority. Right. Well, I mean, I love the... Uh, That's going to be my life. Well, here's the thing. Remember, also, you got to sort of link in with existing grassroots chick movements. Free the nipple. We, you know, you can start there, and you can say, look, we can coordinate together to be both pro-breast and anti-state. Here's my fear, though. You remember when you realized that Penthouse had lied to you and real-life lesbians wore steel toe boots and buzz cuts? Oh, you mean they're not they're not playful they're not playfully cooperative. They're not hot Eskimos. They're not three hot Eskimos or anything like that. Oh, I could have sworn they were. I didn't realize you you're you are the just spoiled Santa Claus for me. Thank you. I'm Go afraid ahead. something like that's going to happen to to free the titties, mm. and it's just going to be this is terrible. Well, yeah. Okay, so I um it sounds to me like. You have successfully implemented the default strategy of the NGP thus far, which is um, have a kid and learn how to love deeply and then also coincidentally be nicer. Incidentally, I guess, not coincidentally. Uh, and then number two, don't think about sad shit. If you can do those two Where's things, divorce work in there? Can we can we work divorce somewhere in there, like point you, one a? You really do need to um, excise the uh, the birth mother from the equation. They tend to put a lot of demand. They think that their their birth mother status mm -hmm. somehow entitles them to put demands on you. So you know, they, they're going to probably raise the kid <laughs> wrong, and they're going to try to tell you what to do. So if you excise those. That sort of I agree. Let's call that one a. Uh, procreate, excise, and then, uh, what's the other one? <laughs> Remember shit. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and be nicer. And oh, be nice. Live, right. live hedonistically a little bit, because you learned your lesson with, right. with one A. Live as hedonistically as you can without engaging in unsustainability. That's the Exactly. Trend. Yeah. Exactly. Don't, don't get addicted to And for some reason, heroin. no one can do that. What's that? For some reason, most people can't do that. The sustainability part seems to just not really sink into most people's brains when they're trying to figure out how to get the rest of that out of the bottom of the light bulb. Yeah. 
Um, well, the thing is, <laughs> the sustainability shit. Uh, is, uh, um, sustainability stuff is a matter of of seeing through that frame, and then you you adjust your your indulgences accordingly. So you got to have because it's not going to work to try to be uh, Captain Abstention. It's not going to work for us if we if we're trying to force ourselves to be that. We're doomed to if we make it too binary and say I'm either Captain Abstention or I'm in the gutter shooting heroin, then um, we're going to be in the gutter shooting heroin. We have to differentiate between different substances, different indulgences, and say this one I can sustain, that one I can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As somebody who's, who's had so, so get your calling out of the way when you're young. Yeah, you gotta you gotta resolve that shit before having try, a kid. Try, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully before try, having. Try, a try try all that stuff while you're really as young as possible. <laughs> start at, start at age six with with just a little light cocaine, okay? Not too much. Don't go overboard. But you don't want to fall asleep on the road trip. Don't listen to that. That's a joke, everybody. Don't, <laughs> dude. If you're six years old, Jimmy, I'm talking to you. Put away that cocaine. No more. You've had enough. Okay, are we done with this video? I think so. You guys got something else you want to add, Taylor? Um, I just would... I'll go ahead and go out on a limb and assume that it's correct to say that famous people don't endorse cocaine or six-year-olds doing cocaine. Absolutely, we do not endorse that at all. That is entirely a joke. I am actually... Like, 12 to 14 is a more <laughs> proper age. <laughs> Thanks, Taylor. Thanks for that. I appreciate that. Uh... <laughs> Let me just uh, say this. I, actually, my official position is this. If you're asking my advice about drugs, my advice is don't do any drugs you haven't already done. That's my position. Unless you've never done any position. drugs and you're over 30. If you've never done any drugs and you're over 30, you need to go do some drugs. But you need to walk into the shallow into that fucking pool. Right. I mean, do a little marijuana. Do some marijuana. That's harmless. Don't don't go. Well, Eric says I need to. I need to start doing some drugs. Let's see. How about PCP? Crank that belt tighter. Yeah. Don't don't start. Yeah. Don't start with PCP. Don't don't ever shoot anything either. There's another rule for drugs. If you are already a drug user, the rule is no needles, no PCC, no PCP. Okay. No needles, no PCP. Except I've always followed that rule. It served me well. I suggest it for you as well. If you're already an intravenous drug user, you need to stop using intravenous drugs right now. It's bad. Unless you're in the hospital and they're giving it to you intravenously, in which case you need to scold them and tell them about the harms of intravenous drug use. <laughs> oh, but it's fine. It's, it's, it's ever seen by professionals. Oh, it's okay then. Right. Experts. Experts, thank, yeah. Thank God for the authorities. Um, thanks for watching Talk With Fans, people. It's been a great pleasure talking with Taylor here, uh, fellow ENTP and fellow parent, and fellow joke maker, and uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>